Then we move into section 7.4, the idea of conservative forces and potential energy. Again, this idea is explored a little bit in the video that I've made on gravitational potential energy. You're looking to make sure you understand the definition of the conservative force. A conservative force is one for which the work done by it or against it only depends upon the starting and ending points of the motion and not on the path taken. You can define the potential energy for any conservative force. So any force where the amount of work done doesn't depend upon the path, in this particular class we will have two experiences of gravity and springs, is a conservative force. Only conservative forces have potential energy. This is a very important idea that not all forces have an associated potential energy. This is something that we will explore in a latter section. So then we move on to, as advertised, the other conservative force that we're really going to talk about in this class, the potential energy of a spring. This is a relationship that you should know. Again, I will not use the notation PE. I will instead use U sub S for the potential energy of a spring. And now you get into the idea of conservation of mechanical energy. This is what happens when you only have conservative forces involved, such as springs and gravity. These are the types of problems that I will expect you to be able to do in your preparatory homework. Only problems that involve conservative forces. It's also worth pointing out that the idea of conservation of energy, at least in the context of physics, derives from the work energy theorem here and the connection between the work done by a conservative force and potential energy here. This is the main reason we spend some time discussing work. Very rarely is work the subject of interest in and of itself, but work provides an important linchpin in understanding where conservation of energy comes from and also how to move from the world of energies to the world of forces, because work is related to both energy, as we see here, and forces, because work is Fd cosine theta. It is also important to know that the work energy theorem presented here deals with the network, the total work done on the object. So the work energy theorem, which is work equals delta k, this work is the net. You add up all the work from all the forces. This is on a force by force basis. So I can talk about the work done by gravity equaling the change with a negative sign in gravitational potential energy or the work done by a spring being equal to negative the change in potential energy of a spring. So this expression is on a force by force basis whereas this expression I have to add all the forces up for it to be true. This is an important distinction that many people skip over. Be sure that you understand it. Example 7.8 is another nice example of problems related to the ones that I will be asking you to do on your homework. This one's perhaps a little bit more involved, but the ideas that are employed are the same. In this particular problem, you have kinetic energies, gravitational potential energies, spring energies, all at play within the same problem. 